I'm Bill Faulkner. Hi, I'm Kristen Harrington. And we'd like to thank you for joining us today for this presentation. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at MRI safety from the perspective of what is required of level two MRI personnel. And so with that, Kristen's going to get us started with the first part of this presentation. Thanks, Bill. So as we start to explore MRI safety, let's first revisit July of 2001. Now, in July of 2001, there was an incident that occurred that started to bring our attention to MRI safety. What happened is Michael Columbini, a six-year-old, was actually injured on the playground. His parents took him to the ER to see if he was okay. They then did a CT on Michael, and what happened is they incidentally found out that he had a brain tumor. So then he went through all the testing, he went through surgery, they were able to resect the entire tumor, and it was benign. Well, this is back in the day when you had direct access into Zone 4, which we'll talk about the zones in a few minutes. What happened is there were two technologists and one physician in the room. And the doctor said, I need oxygen. I need oxygen. And so both technologists left the room, but they also left the room door open with direct access. And the technologists were working on getting the oxygen, but a nurse walked by and heard the doctor saying, I need O2. She found an oxygen tank and she took it into the room. Now, Michael Columbini's head was right where you actually enter the bore. And that's where the translational force is the strongest. So what ended up happening is the oxygen tank was rapidly pulled from her and it hit Michael in the head, and it became lodged between his head and the head coil, where he would go and be entered into the magnet. Uh, so 